Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be talking about how much the build really cost from start through to finish and a little bit about what's happening next. Let's go and take a look. Now, before we head on over and start number crunching, let's have a look at how we got to where we are today. I bought Project MR2 six months ago in December 2019. The car had been off the road for 12 years, outside, uncovered, neglected and unloved unfortunately. The car was a non-runner, it was very rusty in a lot of places and majority of it had been taken apart and bits had just been bundled inside the car. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. As I found out going through it, some parts were missing, some parts were intact, some parts were broken. But over the last six months, I've managed to get the car running again, get all of the structural welding. So from an MOT standpoint, it is a structurally sound car. Gone through all the brakes, suspension, serviced it, and done a lot of cosmetic work and managed to get that elusive MOT. So a car that was destined for the scrap heap that was going to go up to car heaven has been saved and lives to fight another day and will be driven for many happy years hopefully with its new owner and that was my goal to save project MR2 so now let's head on over and see how much it really cost now before we get too deep into all the pound signs and seeing it all start to add up this will not include the purchase price and also the couple of hundred hours that I've put in to the build in my spare time because you don't include your labour because it's only a hobby. Now then, right at the beginning I'll just go through it in chronological order and at the end I'll give you a grand total. £32 on a full set of front and rear brake pads, £50 for a new battery, £90 for a fuel pump. Oh, I wish I never spent the money, but I did! Brand new fuel pump, £90. Fuel filter, the first one of two, £10. Fuel gauge relay, because initially the fuel gauge wasn't working, £13. Stone chip and rust treatment, £25. I bought a sheet of metal, a one metre squared sheet, and that was 11 quid. I still had quite a bit of metal hanging around in the garage, so I did use more metal, but what I actually had to buy in was 11 quid's worth. All of the edging strip, the U-strip that I used all around the side strips and also the front splitter on the car, that ended up costing me initially, until I had to buy more, £11. Some spray sealer for the underbody was 15 quid. A brand new exhaust back box, £69. £12 on spark plugs. £28 on some new HT leads. £5 on a rotor arm. £20 on a distributor cap, brand new exhaust mount which didn't fit, £11, some cavity wax, 18 quid. arch liner screws, £9, I ended up buying originals and then I found out that you can just buy normal screws online that do the same job, but I spent £9 quid on that. Um, a headlight bracket and various clips and also the headlight assembly because someone removed the one on the car when I got it. £43, one good part worn tyre, supplied and fitted, £25. The rubber restorer spray that I used on all the rubber seals on the T-bar, £10. Various trim clips to finish off the car and reassemble it, that was a further £10. Now this was the biggie, this was the turning point, there's a lot of 10s and 20s in there. A full poly bush kit for the whole car. When I found out that the rear suspension was tired and needed replacing, it was more cost effective to buy a poly bush kit, excluding anti roll bars, for the whole car, which I ended up fitting all the way through. 200 quid. I was doing really well up to that stage. I thought this is going to be a nice budget build. <laughs> 200 pound. A caliper bolt, because I snapped one of the rear caliper bolts. 8 pound 50. For a bolt. 8 pound 50. Madness. A new radiator cap, £9. Um, another headlight bracket and surround. I believe that was because I bought the glass 
initially and then I realized I needed the bracket and the motor and that was 36 pounds more edging strip 12 pounds because I didn't measure properly and I had to buy the same amount again a good rear hub 49 pounds this was three hubs in a row that I had to reject because they had play in them until I got one that was good that was acceptable for the car but that was because we were in lockdown I should have bought a wheel bearing but that involved using a press so it was easier moving forward to get a good second hand one strip it clean it paint it fit it which is what I did but 49 quid not cheap a door handle because the driver's side door handle clips the internal threads have broken so that was slapping all over the place and a few clips and bits and bobs I got on the day and that was 55 pounds a front splitter in the grill, bought in a real grotty, nasty state, stripped it, cleaned it, made my own fixings and the U-shaped rubber trim, fitted it to the car, it looked lovely, and it only cost me £30. That was the, the deal of the day, that was. Brand new wipers from Toyota, they're very specific to the Mark 1, 10 quid. Oil and oil filter for the service, £19. Um, spoiler fitting clips etc because the rear perspex see-through toyota spoiler on the back of the car had clips missing so i had to modify and play around with that that was 16 pound 50 four pounds on penny washers don't really know what i use those for but it was four pounds um a full stripe kit from neil jones 28 pounds which as you saw really finished off the car and made it look factory fresh Another fuel filter, £7, that was when we got involved in the diagnostics of the second fuel pump and fuel pressures and all the videos towards the end of the series. Another fuel filter, £7. A throttle position sensor, £39. And why did I have to buy that? Because in the Haynes manual, they made a mistake on their diagram. My original one, which is here, is not faulty. So there was nothing wrong with that, but 39 quid. Rocker cover fixings when I did the engine bay restoration, that was seven pounds. Uh, a circuit open relay, again, not required. It was my bad. I was kind of clutching at straws a little bit, really, when we were chasing that unusual running issue towards the end. 21 pounds, that was. Again, not needed, but that was my bad. Um, some silver gearbox paint, part of the engine bay restoration, 11 pounds. The vapour blasting on the inlet manifold, which was, it, it did finish the job, it did look very smart. That was 40 quid. Um, the missing boot strip on the return edge of the boot, you got a rub, kind of a rubbery plastic black strip that goes, that was missing. Um, and also the Toyota, the Toyota badge and the Twin Cam 16, I believe, from memory badges on the back of the car, plus postage, 45 quid. Um, Coil and igniter, 41 quid posted. Again, it was part of the diagnostic process going through the weird issue at the end. It wasn't needed. So if you add up the coil and igniter, the TPS, and the circuit open really, that was 100 pounds that didn't need to be spent, but it was. Um, all of the gauge and bits and bobs that I made up for the fuel testing kit, which obviously came back off the car afterwards, was £24, but that was part of chasing that weird issue towards the end. Um, the paint and the primer for the alloy wheel refurbing was £39 quid to paint those wheels that I despise, and they're disgusting still to this day, even though the car isn't here, I still hate them but 39 quid to refurb and finish off the outside of the car after it had been machine polished and it came up pretty nice, made sense to me, even though I do hate them. Front springs, another boo-boo on my part, but I'm not ashamed to admit it. 65 quid on a set of front springs that I ended up replacing to fix my knocking noise that was on the back of the car, anti-roll bar bracket which was 20 quid, anti-roll bar bracket and bush. So that is it. From the start all the way through to the end, MOT'd on the road, looking relatively presentable, but not without its issues, all in 1,328 pounds, which I think, considering the amount of work that was carried out and everything that was achieved from a very rusty, off the road, non-running, very ropey, in bits, 
borderline disgusting car up to what you saw when it was finished when it left the garage at the end of the series. 1,328 quid I think represents pretty good value and that's actually quite savvy for me because normally I set a budget and I completely blow it but I budgeted a thousand pounds for this build now if you take out the poly bushes and the hundred quids worth of bits that I kind of didn't need to replace I would have been on budget but it is what it is so there we go then guys a little bit about the history behind project MR2 how much it cost to build but now it is time to talk about why the contents of my garage is neatly boxed up in the middle of the floor and that is because it is time to move on. Now there's a lot of plans happening behind the scenes at the moment so I won't say too much because if those plans don't come to fruition I'll look like more of an idiot than I normally do. But it's all positive. All of these changes that are happening because they have to will lead to bigger things for the channel. But what will my next project be? All I will say is think outside the box a little bit and it's got potential to be my biggest project ever. But it will take time. But more on that as and when it happens and when I'm more in a position to say a little bit more about it. But one quick thing before I go guys. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for liking, subscribing, following and also your comments. Be it on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. There's a lot of people out there with a lot of knowledge that have helped me through this project because this is my first ever Mark 1 MR2 build. Now also if you're sat at home and you're saying I want to do a Mark 1, I want to do a restoration, don't be afraid. Get out and buy yourself one. These cars are still very affordable and they're becoming they're becoming valuable. They're going up in value all the time. So you shouldn't in theory lose a penny unless you spend an absolute fortune rebuilding one. And also you can get all parts for every single aspect of the car, be it second hand and some you can still get from Toyota and you can get reproduction ones because there are people out here that break these cars for a living and the parts are really, really cheap. So if you're thinking about doing one, get out and get it done you will not regret it because when you get the car back on the road and you go out for your first drive and that TVs kicks in at 4200 rpm and that 4AG revs all the way up to seven and a half and beyond and it all starts to fizz and bubble and get really exciting it will all be worth it it really will get out and get it done stay tuned see you soon I will miss my old garage Hmm.